everyone, we're on page 239 and we're going to look at exercises D and E, so please make sure you have completed those before you watch this video. I'm going to talk through the answers here. Okay, so for D it says make notes about a survivor's story in reading two. So this is the second part of the reading here where we're talking about um, we're learning about Allison Wright, a survivor's story. So these questions can all be answered on page 233 and 234. Okay, so in D it says, number one, is the narrative in the first person or the third person? Okay, so to do this, you need to um, have read the information in these boxes. Okay, we're going to go through these in class. But here it says, note, if you're writing a narrative, that's a story about yourself, write it in the first person using I or me or we. If you're writing about someone else, write it in the third person using he, him, she, her, they, or them. Now, if you're writing about your own story, you can write about yourself in the third person. That's fine. Um, so number one says, is the narrative in the first or the third person? Well, let's take a look. So there's an introduction, but then there's a narrative, and I see this quotation marks, which makes me think at the beginning and at the end, which makes me think it's somebody else talking. So she says, when the truck hit, I slammed my head hard. I, I, my. So I can tell she's talking about herself, so that would be the first person. Okay, number two, what do you think was the main conflict or challenge Allison Wright faced? So you could have lots of different answers here. I said being injured, surviving a bus crash, um, rehabilitating herself, living through an accident, any of those things would be fine. Complete the sentences about the events in the story. A, Allison Wright was traveling, notice the past progressive there, was traveling on a bus in Laos in 2000 when an accident occurred. So she was traveling when something happened to her. That's why we have past progressive and simple past. The accident interrupted her traveling. B, she broke simple past because you break something in a moment. She broke her back and ribs and what else did she do, simple past? She injured her organs badly. These are things that happen in a moment and they're done. C, when she woke up, simple past, she realized, simple past, she had to control her breathing if she wanted to live. Okay, D, she was rescued by, by whom? An aid worker who drove her for seven hours to a hospital. Okay, what was the resolution to write story? So we remember in a story we have a conflict or a problem or a difficult situation. It could be a psychological problem that you have to overcome, something in your mind. It could be a relationship problem. It could be a survival problem. So what was the resolution to this story? How did it resolve? How did it end? She felt that it had made her more grateful. Calming her breath kept her calm and alive. You could write anything um, similar to that. Okay, what are some examples of time words in these paragraphs? You're going to want to use some time words in your essay. So let's take a look. Here it says paragraph G. So in paragraph G, I'm going to flip back a few pages here. Here we go. Can we see G? There it is. Okay, we have when, when the truck, excuse me, when the truck hit. Um, and then I have instantly. So this is an adverb saying, when did I break my back? Instantly. It happened very quickly. Okay, and when is one of those special words that creates a complex sentence. When the truck hit, comma, I slammed my head hard. Okay, so when and instantly. Then H, I also have when, again, when I came to, comma, I looked around the bus. This is also a complex sentence. 
Um, so these are subordinating conjunctions, if you want the fancy word. Then, then tells us that something happened after another event. We use these for sequences. Very important when you're telling um, the sequence of your story. Okay, and then in, so paragraph G I have when and instantly, paragraph H I have when and then, then paragraph J I have quite a few here. I was eventually rescued. So this is an adverb, L-Y, um, usually comes at the end of an adverb, not always, but I was eventually rescued. When was I rescued? Eventually. It describes the verb rescued. Okay, after four months in bed. So after here is a preposition, starting a prepositional phrase. After four months. Um, when one told me, again, I've got a subordinating conjunction for the complex sentence. And then every morning is a word that goes um, to describe, as a phrase that describes a continued action in the present or the past. So, every morning, I'd, I'd here is short for I would. And we use would in the past to describe actions or habits, something that we would usually do. All right, hope those make sense. So I have eventually, after, when, and every morning. Okay, and E, choose the best thesis statement for the descriptive na narrative of Alison Wright's story. So the descriptive narrative means a, des a descriptive story. That's what we read. Now we want to choose the best thesis statement. And hopefully if we read the writing skills paragraph, we see thesis statement here in bold. It says the introductory paragraph should also include a thesis statement. The statement can show what the reader can learn from the story, what the person learned from the experience, or what helped the person get through the conflict. Now, I don't think you have to have that in your introduction. Um, a lot of teachers say it's good to put it in your introduction, so you make sure you have it there. But really, when you're telling a story, the thesis often belongs at the end. Um, good writers will put some kind of thesis at the beginning, to give you an idea of what to expect, and then they will make a strong thesis statement at the end. So it's really, what is the meaning of the story? What is the meaning, the message, the lesson, the main idea? That's the thesis. So let's take a look. In January 2000, photographer Allison Wright, 45, was riding a bus in Laos when it was struck by a logging truck. Is that a message or a lesson or some deep idea? No, it's just telling us the basic information. That would be a good introductory sentence, right? Gives us the basic information. Okay, number two. According to medical professionals, Alison Wright should have died when the truck hit her bus. Okay, is that a main lesson or idea or meaning? No. Okay, it's a shocking fact. It's very interesting, but it doesn't actually teach us anything. Okay, number three, Alison Wright's will to live, combined with her ability to regulate her fear response, enabled her to defy the odds. Yes, this is the meaning of, this, of the whole narrative. What is it trying to teach us? It's trying to give us an example to show that regulating your fear response um, and having a strong will and desire can actually help you in emergency situations um, to survive even when it seems medically impossible. So that was the meaning of the story. All right, good job, everybody.